Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk a little bit later about how the finish on this patio went from a broom finish to a smooth steel trowel finish. So we'll talk about that in a little bit when it comes up. What we're doing here is we're pouring a 12 foot by 30 foot concrete patio on the back of a garage. Now we've done quite a bit of work for this, this homeowner right here. The homeowner is actually an excavator. So he did all the prep work as far as the crushed rock here and the styrofoam. And then I came in and I put up the forms. I put the rebar mat in, I put the ISO foam up against the building and around the piers and, you know, set everything to grade. And then we're showing up here today, me and Luke getting this thing poured. So when we first showed up, we just figured we were going to mag this out a couple times, put a light broom finish on it, and then that would be good. And then you'll see what happens here a little bit later on as far as that goes. But right now, the access to this was just down the side of the garage. And you can see I had to use my 16-foot cold chute added on to the truck chute and that's as close as we got so there's a little bit of pull in here to go to get this thing started and those two pins in the middle there though with the yellow clip with the yellow uh, sets on them those are in there because that part right up against see the white door there to the right that goes into the garage there's a set of steps that sets on that area right there and the homeowner wanted that area flat so I set that area flat um, from basically right where I'm standing right there is flat so those were just a little bit of a guide to go by and then from those it's gonna slope out towards that outside form there a little bit and the rest of the slab all slopes to the outside a little bit so it kinda goes flat right there and then it slopes down towards the concrete truck as well as out to the left there to that form on the very outside now it's really warm here today and this is actually the second pour of the day. We left Luke and Darren on another pour we did earlier and then we thought, you know, Luke and the other Luke here, young Luke and I would come down and just get this thing done today because the homeowner's been waiting a little bit for this. Things have been really busy um, and just the opportunity to get a lot of things done is tough because it's hard to order concrete these days with the lack of concrete drivers and you know just get concrete whenever you want to so we kind of have to work around their schedule a little bit as well as work around ours so i got the little flat part done up there and now i'm just doing this tapered part out here this six feet is tapered out that was the other than the 12 foot screed i have i'll use on the rest of it this was the only other screed i had today it was about a four footer so i'm just I'm showing you how you can extend that out a little bit and get that really nice slope in six feet when you got a really short screed. That's how you do it right there. So we'll get this poured, Luke and I, and we'll get it both loaded. And then we're going to jump right into the finishing part of the video and just show you more, a little bit more about how we finished it versus how we got it poured. If you want to see some pouring videos, you know, you can just go check out I'll have a couple linked um, at the end of this one but we do all kinds of concrete pours so here we are this was about 20 minutes or so after we got it poured we got the tools washed up and because you know some of this is in the sun some of it's in the shade we wanted to get the sun part kind of kind of magged right out quick because we knew we knew this stuff was going to set up fast being on styrofoam and there was going to be a little bit different rate of how it sets up that part in the back there where the shade is isn't going to set up anywhere near as fast as the part that's in the sun. Luckily, this, the way the sun's going, it's kind of it's kind of going in the direction where more of it's getting in the sun than the shade. So that's going to make it a little bit easier on us, but we're still going to have to deal with that part in the back right there. So I cut a couple joints in on each of these columns. So we basically broke it into 12 by 10 squares. That's where the, you know, hopefully the expansion contraction will take place. If it does want to crack, it's hopefully going to want to crack right in those joints. And that'll hide any type of, uh, you know, shrinking type crack that may occur. Being where it's on styrofoam, being where the excavator put it in a really good sub base and there's rebar in this okay so here's the conversation we're having about changing the finish right here yeah we wouldn't go too heavy with anything okay yeah i mean so i can wipe know. it out kind of smoothish if you want or i could i could hit it two or three times by hand then lightly drag a broom over it i mean whatever you think yeah um if it i mean i'm okay if it's just somewhat smooth yep yeah okay right no, we can do that. I think, however, I, I trust Ray. Hold on. 
Yeah. No, I want to do what you kind of kind of yeah. what you want. So. Yeah, I, I think fairly fairly smooth is good. All right, we'll do that. We'll hit a couple times with the hand trial. Yep. All right, so we got the plan in place now. We're going to smooth hand trial finish it. Uh, I'm going to show you here in a minute just how I'm going to do that. But right now I'm just going over it with the mag float again. Um, get, trying to get it as smooth as I can, you know, from whatever I can reach from the outside. Before I jump on it with my, I'm going to have to get it on it with my skids. Grab a couple hand trials and get out there, you know, and just finish it off really smooth. And then try to avoid going, I'm going to have to go over those joints again, but I'll touch them up too. I'll show you how I touch them up. So I'm just kind of blending in where that slope area was right there, where it goes from flat to sloped, uh, back down to that board there to the left where Luke's magging out right now. We're also edging this, so we're putting a nice rounded edge on it. Now we're not going to leave the edger mark because we're going to leave this smooth finished. So we'll just blend the edger uh, part of it smooth too, but obviously leave the rounded part. Now Luke just did something that was really inexperienced there is he picked his mag float straight up off the concrete. Now whenever you finish concrete you got to slide that thing as you pick it up because the concrete's going to want to stick to it. Especially any concrete that's got some air entrainment in it like this stuff does. He's figuring it out right there. Remember he's brand new. He's a new finisher so he's getting it figured out. But that's one quick way to learn right there is when you pick something up really straight. Same with these skids here. Those skids are going to want to keep sliding. Not going to want to pick those things up straight or they're going to pick a big chunk of concrete right out of the surface. So there's my three hand trials I'm using. <laughs> Mostly those two big ones though. So I got the square edge one that's 12 inch and I got the one that's kind of like the pool trowel I like using. That one tends to leave less lines in the concrete when the concrete's a little bit more green like this. So I, like, I like, kind of like that pool trowel. As the concrete firms up and sets up a little bit, then you know, you move, I like to move back to the square trowel a little bit, but I've used the pool trowels for so long that, I don't know, just they're, they're interchangeable to me. It's kind of what your preference is. A lot of guys don't like those pool trowels for finishing concrete, but I do. So there I am, touching up the joint, using the joint tool, just making sure that joint looks nice and smooth as I trial it because that's going to be the finished joint now which is a little bit different when you run a broom across it you know when you run a broom you just you just clean that joint out you know you mag and sometimes some guys will trial down the the groove mark and then you just run the broom over it and the broom kind of leaves a nice finish mark on the on the tool mark so you don't have to just keep going over it and over it like I am You can see how I switch back and forth a little bit. I always use one trowel to, to kind of lean my weight on too. And then I also, when I, as I'm leaning my weight on it, I'm using it to push, kind of give me some leverage to push backwards with those, with those skids. So Luke's just learning. Remember, he's just learning how to finish concrete. He hasn't hardly finished any concrete at all. And there he goes. He picks that thing straight up again. <laughs> You can see how easy that stuff sticks to it. Like you've got to slide your finishing tools on the surface of the concrete. So there's also, you know, there's a little trick to filling those things back into. Now it's happened to me. It's happened to me hundreds of times. So it's not that big a deal. The key is really knowing how to finish it without having to waste too much time, you know, fixing it again. <laughs> kind of making it disappear. And that's how you do it right there. There, it's all gone. So as this sets up more, as the surface dries out a little bit more and gets a little bit harder when you're finishing like this, it does tend to want to stick to those skids, you know, more and more as it gets harder. So that kind of increases the degree of difficulty of finishing without having to continually fill in, you know, these little these little holes left behind by the concrete sticking to the to the skids plus you know a little bit of the, the air entrainment adds to the level of difficulty a little bit too but that's kind of what we're up against here so right now normally you know we'd be pulling the broom over this this thing would be done as we're going 
and you know we'd be picking up and getting out of here but since since we want to get it get it a really nice uh, hand trial finish you know the difference between what's out here by the board where it's been in the sun basically the whole time versus the part up against the building that's just coming into the sun you can see there's a little bit of shade left there there's quite a bit of difference in how firm one part is versus the other so this part out here where I am right now now it's getting really smooth those hand trials I have are actually from DeWalt so they're they're as good as any of the Marshalltown ones I've ever used um, and you know DeWalt kind of work I'm a brand ambassador for DeWalt so we're been we've been using a lot of their tools and they came out with a brand new line of concrete tools so we're, we're using all those now and then they seem to work fine for all the concrete finishing we're doing yeah so I just kind of hit that part that's been in the Sun the longest that that three or four feet in from that outside edge and basically as long you can see how I hit that I reached out and I hit as far as I could probably probably about four feet right there and that you know that took me a few minutes so I'm not really I'm not really taking much time to jump right back on this thing and hit it again because there's a couple things I know as a finisher number one if I give it too much time it's gonna dry up on me and I'm not gonna get a good finish on it uh, you know it's just it's gonna be too dry and if it's if it's uh, if I get a, if I wait a little too long as far as the skids go like I said you can see it's starting to pick up a little bit right there see that little piece I just kind of smoothed over it starts sticking to the skids quite a bit so I know I want to get right back on this and get this as smooth as I possibly can there's another little piece right there I'm fixing so I had to kind of deal with that a little bit on this very last hit all the way down this middle and a little bit down this this back edge I was kind of fighting that a little bit and if uh, you know if you don't know what you're doing like if I had Luke get on here and do this he that would have just been a complete mess he'd have just been picking up big chunks and then not knowing how to fill them taking too long this back piece here had just a little bit more moisture to it because it was in the shade it hasn't been in the Sun that long so it was basically basically that middle piece I was fighting the most and then as I'm going over the joint you know I'm trying to be real careful going over the joint I know that's going to be the finished look to the joint so I want to make sure that looks nice and smooth both sides of it and the inside of it as well I'm not <laughs> I'm not letting Luke get on this right now just because of that reason you know I don't want him to to have to battle the the skids he's done enough finishing for today so he's learning a little bit more every single day and you know he learned a couple lessons there by picking that mag straight up so hopefully uh, hopefully each day adds on to another and he gets a little bit better each day so now this is you know now we've hit it two or three times you know we've hit it twice with the mag we've hit it this is a second or third time here I think with a steel trial so it's this thing's coming out really smooth and that's exactly what the homeowner wanted he just want he wanted to be able to put some tables out here some chairs uh, not have a rough finish at all like a broom finish have it be able to sweep easy or, or rinse off real easy with a hose get it clean and then uh, that was exactly what the homeowner wanted so let me know what you guys think down in the comments what would you have done would you have rather had a broom finish on this or do you like the smooth type finish on it uh, let me know a little bit about the process would you have done it the same way if you're a concrete guy but thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one